On today's episode of the show, we're going to take a look at what's really becoming a much more common part of the game, especially down south and starting to make its way uh, up into Canadian football as well, and that's the frontside RPO. Now, we've talked on this channel, you know, we've had multiple speakers come on, talk about RPOs. It's really uh, a developing and incredibly important, I think, part of the future of offensive football. And we've mostly focused on what most people call a backside RPO. So, and a, what I mean by a backside RPO is that the run is going to one side and there are opportunities to throw the ball in behind that on the opposite side. Today we're going to talk about frontside RPOs. Um, and I think it's something that, you know, especially in the Canadian field, there's a ton of space and teams a lot of the time are, are wanting to play zone. It's a great way uh, to add the opportunity to make a big play on the front side of any run scheme. So first we're just going to take a look at Alabama. Um, you know, they're running this out of a two back look. They're going to run a power concept. It's kind of a late start to the clip. You can even see this guard already starting to pull. Um, they're going to run a power concept to the right. Uh, and they're going to run a kind of what people call a glance post in behind it on the front side. Uh, and they're going to read the line first linebacker play side. Now, here, you know, Tennessee to me looks like they're not even really aligned properly. Um, and so that puts them in kind of a tough spot. I'm not sure who the D gap defender is supposed to be over here, unless they're going to cut the corner to it. Um, but we're looking to run this underneath the safety. Okay, and over top of that linebacker. And if he plays down in, into the run fit, they're going to pull and throw the slant or glance route. So you see here the quarterback stand. We'll look at it from the tight staring down where that linebacker should be. He's clearly stepped up. All right. You see the pulling guard from the back side. Linebacker steps up and they're able to throw that slant glance route right in behind his head. Gets up field. You got power called and you end up with a 20 yard gain. So we see right there, snap pulls him off a little bit. But right there he's looking, and this linebacker's stepping up. He sees this area of the field wide open. Now he's going to pull and throw that. If this linebacker were to drop into that void, now you'd be able to follow this guard. And again, because they're misaligned, I think they have a pretty good run here no matter what. Okay, but they're able to pull and throw that into the second level. Okay, taking a look at this second clip. Again, this is a front side RPO. Uh, this is actually out of an unbalanced set. I wish I had found this one when I did my uh, unbalanced set um, video from a ways back. You guys can check that out. Um, this is another thing I think is could become huge, especially in a Canadian field, all the space. So they don't have anyone on the end of the line of scrimmage over here. They just have an offensive tackle. Um, so it's really an unbalanced formation. This receiver is ineligible, right? He's covered by this receiver here, yet they still have a DB have to be responsible for him because he can become a blocker in the run game. Um, but it really messes up. You know, I think uh, Tennessee's a split field coverage team. You know, all of a sudden that's a complicated thing for them to defend. Now there's a little bit of trickery here. Alabama looks at the sideline, gets them to look, um, which is cool in itself. But really what I want you to see here is, again, they're reading that first linebacker play side. Now here it's probably a nickel. Okay, but that out guy who's playing what would be the outside linebacker spot, you know, out over that number three receiver to the field, they're reading him with this bubble screen. This is something if you're in those unbalanced sets that I love because now you're two for two. You can block these guys up. Okay, this guy being ineligible, it doesn't matter because the ball's gonna get thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Okay, he's running the bubble, and if he tries to add into the bubble fit. Okay, now we're going to run the football. If he hangs in his run fit, now the ball's on the perimeter right now. So we see the give, and that's able to get vertical. Again, another big chunk, 13, 14-yard play. So again, there's a little bit of deception getting them look to the sideline. Okay, but again, we see here they're reading the outside linebacker, so they got a blocker for 35. You can see you know, the quarterback's vision is out on that bubble. And what that does now is he's out of the fit, 
This is just a counter F or, or a power switch concept. You'll see this in the OUA all the time. Um, you know, we've run it. Laurier Western makes a killing on it. Um, lots of teams running power F. Okay. But now this pulling fullback, he's really going to end up being responsible for 35, the inside linebacker, whereas normally you'd have to pull around for the Sam. And we see here, you know, he ultimately doesn't end up, you know, he might be able to pull through for the safety there, but they're able to get downhill, um, you know, on a really good run. And if that, if, if that nickel or outside linebacker, if he hesitates at all, right, you can get this ball out of the bubble screen up just as good a play out there. So now let's take a look at this, you know, on a Canadian field. And, you know, this is something we ran a little bit, not a ton last year um, at Laurier. But this is a concept I think is going to make its way up into Canada more. Now, here we don't run it as vertically down the field. All right, your eyes are going to be on uh, the left side of the offensive line. Okay, and then our two receivers here to the field. We're in 21 personnel, so we're a little – we widen the edges a bit. Um, and that's one thing. I love spread RPOs. Love spread RPOs. We run them. Um, I've run them with my summer teams. I think they're great. One of the benefits of running RPOs out of a heavier personnel with fullbacks and tight ends is you can widen the edges and be a little more solid in protection. So here, again, we're going to read the play side Sam linebacker. Now it looks a little bit different. I can get that to go back. It looks a little bit different um, just because of the alignment. Okay, but here... We're going to read this play side linebacker. And ultimately what we're going to do is create a situation where, okay, you know, we've run, you know, tons of, of out and fade over here. Uh, you know, this guy's one of the best players in the conference, Brenton Hall. So they're leaving that safety to potentially be able to double team on a vertical from number one. And, you know, we knew that was how they're going to play it coming in. Um, so what we're able to do, right, we got these eight guys in the box, is we're able to basically say, okay, the only guy that can help on a slant is that outside linebacker. He's also responsible for the D-gap. We're going to run a, a power switch concept here, and we're going to read him, okay? And when he disappears inside, no matter what they have called, even if it's zone, it just becomes man, right? So now we're going to be able to run kind of a double slant, Option here, catch the ball in the window. And again, we've got power called, right? But we're able to, to pick up, you know, 15 yards or so right off that front side throw. And then that can really slow down the guys on the edge of the run fits. And, you know, especially if, if you're a team that's running the ball off tackle, um, you know, power, counter, right? Those are the guys that make your life hard. And here you can really – you know, make them hesitate uh, with that type of concept. So let's take a look at that on the whiteboard and kind of draw it up, uh, make sure everybody has an understanding of what we're looking for there from an X's and O's standpoint. One of the cool things I really like about this concept is, again, it's like any RPO. You can run this uh, out of multiple formations. You can run this out of really any type of run scheme. I would say if, if I'm running same side RPOs, uh, I don't want the run game going too laterally. Um, so first I'll draw, you know, what we ran there. That last clip you saw, offset the back strong. Okay, so I want the run being downhill. Okay, and then the pass is either going to be a horizontal or vertical stretch on that RPO player. So what I mean by that is this. We like our matchups one on one out here to the field, right? We have two guys. In this case, we had them running kind of slant routes. Okay. Out of this particular set, we're pretty sure the free safety is going to help double in the boundary. All right. If not, we're just going to run him on a fade. Okay. Take that one on one shot, or you could even have fade comeback option there. Force him to stay in the middle of the field. All right. And then we're just running what we call power switch. Now, the reason I, I liked power switch out of it this week is I would rather, if we're going to run a same side RPO, keep the run as downhill as possible. So instead of having the, the 
pull her, pull around the tight ends down block. We slipped back to the mic and pulled to trap that rush end, kick him out. Our, our double team now is working all the way back to this will linebacker. Okay. And then our tackle and our fullback could secure the B and C gap. And if there's no B gap threat, they can even secure against some sort of edge pressure with the D gap. And that's going to allow the back to stay very downhill in the run. Okay. And then out here, you know, we ran kind of your two slant routes. Okay. Cause we were getting, you know, same level defenders. You could mix up what you do with that concept. Um, you know, you could run, you don't have to have them both run the slant. Um, you know, you have options there. You could have this inside guy go to the corner. Um, you know, you could run double stop. Uh, we thought with this isolation type set that we're going to end up with two on two. So that's where we really like the slant route. Um, so that's, that's certainly one option for you. Obviously that's with a fullback and a tight end on the field. If you want to do this, you know, a ton of teams are doing this out of 21 personnel. Sorry, a ton of teams are doing this out of, you know, 11 personnel or, or two back. So one way you could do that, you know, in the Canadian game, well, you could run the same thing, right, that we saw Bama run there, except you have that X receiver. So again, back set to the field. If we're running it to the field. Okay, and now again, most teams that I've, seen at least in the OUA level and the summer ball level very few teams want to give you the boundary one-on-one -on -one. so you're going to see a lot of teams where this half is kind of poaching number three and helping on number one um, so out of this type of look I would love to make that guy irrelevant okay we can still run you know our out fade option here to occupy to give him something to keep him you know from from getting involved in the front side or them spinning down Okay, but we're looking at, again, reading that Sam linebacker, first linebacker uh, in the box. So now we could block back and run that power switch again, pull the guard. Now this time we're going to pull the fullback up through for the mic. Okay, this is exactly what Bama did in the second drawing, okay, or second video. And now here we're just simply running the bubble. And now we're creating a horizontal stretch. So in the first one, we created that vertical stretch where we were throwing the ball in behind that RPO player. Here now, we're going to see, and if he steps in, now we're creating that horizontal stretch, putting the ball out here on the perimeter um, over top of that receiver he's covered down on. So two great ways I think you can run the front side RPO. You do not need to run it with pullers. If you're a zone team and you want to run this without pullers, split zone is a great look. A lot of people are doing that as well. So the fullback comes across and kicks the end. Okay, and now we're just running inside zone. Okay, or kind of veer backside zone if that's your deal. Okay, and now you can do the exact same thing. So you could create, you know, a horizontal stretch on that defender by having the bubble. Okay, or you could still create, you know, that vertical stretch on that player. Say you have... You know, this guy run through to gut the safety, and now you have your double slant. Um, or whether you want to run kind of a corner post option there, or even all stops, all of them would be effective. So, again, you're just taking that run fit of the play side linebacker and either horizontally or vertically stretching it um, with that RPO. And that allows you to really, it's almost like having an extra blocker in the box. People are always talking about trying to find a way to outman the defense. You're taking his responsibility and making him be in two plays at once. And I think the front side zone, especially with downhill run, is a great way to do that.